This is Steve from Boxing UK in association with Supreme CBD. Ohara Davis, you told us a couple of weeks ago you'll come to Newcastle and upset the fans. You were spot on. Yeah, um, you know, I'm happy I'm fighting for, for a good fight and um, got him out of there. Now I'm just about to relax, rest in, relax and get back to normal life. Talk to us about that introduction, that ring walk, for those that haven't seen it. I felt like the Undertaker. <laughs> I felt like a killer before I went in the ring. You know, usually I get a lot of nerves and stuff like that. I had nerves before this fight, but I just felt like an absolute killer. These guys they kill me in the gym, and I said, "This time I'm going there, I'm somebody." And um, you know, I felt like the Undertaker. Was that your best display? I believe so. And I still need to watch it back. Look at the mistakes I made, and look at what I've done right. Um, you know, it, it might be my my best display, but I've got better ones yet to come. You hurt Lewis Ritten a few times, I think it's fair to say, before the eventual stoppage. Did you fail on top throughout those nine rounds? I fell on top, but he kept on changing his, like, his fighting style, where he kept on catching with a jab, and then he kept on fighting in close, and you know I kept on trying to go downstairs, but he had a very good guard, a good defence downstairs, and then he was hurt, but even when he was hurt, he had a good jab, and he had fight, and he's quite strong, he's quite physically strong. Um, he just, he, uh, he ain't got that one punch. KO power, which is why I couldn't afford to be in front of him and have my hands down sometimes. And sometimes, even though I shouldn't, I was getting hit with, hit with the jab on purpose. I said, you know what, I'll, I'll get hit with the jab, but then I'm going to throw the right uppercut. Because he didn't have that one punch KO kind of, kind of shot. But in the future, when I fight someone that does, these are things that I need to fix up on. I can't be making, mis I can't be making these certain mistakes at the top level. Talk to us about the stoppage. Not only was it a brutal shot to the ribs, Lewis stayed down for quite some time. Did you know as soon as that landed it was over? No, my corner just kept saying throw the shot, just kept throwing the shot. I didn't think it was going to work, but I said, fine, you guys want to keep firing, I keep firing it. But then when he went down, I was like, wow, these guys are right. <laughs> he went down. <laughs> I was like, thank you, guys. Um, he went down for quite a long time. He was down for quite a long time. He was hurt, but luckily, uh, thankfully, he's okay now. I spoke to him after the fight, and you know, he seems okay. He's boxing. It happens, you know, we've all been stopped, I've been stopped. Um, it's a part of the game and um, it was a great experience. To those that don't know you, O'Hara, other than the headlines that they read on social media, behind the scenes you've been very complimentary, you've been very polite, well-mannered to everybody that's spoken to you. Is this the new OD or has not, that always been you? The, it's not the new OD, it's, this is the real OD. A lot of my, a lot of my boxing career, I've been trying to be someone that I'm not. But looking up to these guys a lot of the time when I first got into boxing, looking at Money Mayweather, Muhammad Ali, and the way that, the arrogance and the way that they act and, you know, I've tried to imitate that. And I've realised it doesn't work when I try to imitate someone, I try to be someone that I'm not. It's all about being myself and whether that sells or not. I said, you know what, I come into this fight, I'm like, I like Lewis Richardson. I made a few jokes and stuff with the Man United t-shirts, a few jokes, a few friendly jokes, but I was always nice and respectful to him and his team and his dad and his coach. And, um, you know, I think I left um, um, a good mark. Um, I don't think they're going to go back and think that guy or Harold's a cunt. I think they're going to go back and think, you know what, he's a good fighter and, and he's decent. He's a decent human being. The biggest compliment that Geordies can pay up here is you actually got applauded out the ring, which for us speaks volumes. Yeah, you know, I'm glad um, I think they're saying good things about me over social media now, and, um, you know, <laughs> I guess I'm the bad guy going good. <laughs> we talked last time about the journey that you've been on. You've had some pretty good highs, you've had some pretty rough lows. Mm -hmm. World title next. Can you sum up how you feel? Now, I just want to rest now. I've been in the gym too long. I've been training. I've sacrificed so much of the last few months. I don't feel nothing. I just feel like, you know what, when I was in the ring and when they, when they were saying round eight, I think it was, I think it was in round eight, I was like, I was saying to myself, my coaches, they had me in the gym for months and months and months, sacrificing my life. I was like, mate, I've got 12 minutes left and no one can tell me what to do on Monday morning. I've got, I, do, I do the last 12 minutes. This is what I'm saying in the ring. Um, as I leave that corner to go into round eight, I said, mate, on Monday morning, I've just got to do, I've done everything that they've asked me, everything that they asked me, 12 more minutes. All you want me to do is win 12 more minutes and I'm done. And I'm done. Monday morning, I'm stay in bed and I, order what I want to order. And be whatever way I want to be. No one can have that. Oh, these check your way. What way? Listen, I'm away what I want to weigh. Will I have to ask you while you sit next to him? Uh, is that the first time you've heard that? Well, no, you... He's back in the gym Monday. Don't worry. He's <laughs> been cleaning it. We missed his mate for 12 weeks. But now, nah, listen, he deserves a time off. He's worked unbelievably hard. 
there's been highs and lows in camp. There's been arguments. There's been like just petty arguments, but it's part of boxing. Or is or isn't on. What what's made me proud the most is that people are speaking nice of the guy I know. Yeah. Like people were really talking in favour of him rather than talking about how oh, bad guy. And this is the treatment this guy deserves. Like we should all, everyone like the whole country should get behind him now as he goes for a world title shot. Like he deserves it. He's proved his worth time and time again. We've had a shit couple of years because of all this mess, but now he's on the right track and. I've said it, I've said it from the first time I've done O'Hara's corner, he's going to win a world title, and he will, he will win a world title. O'Hara Davies, are you going to win a world title? I will win a world title, it's my, it's my goal, my dream. I'm going to achieve it, keep good friends around me, friends and good family. A lot of my boxing career, I've been surrounding myself with the wrong people. And, you know, as I've gotten older, I've had a bit of time off and wiser. Now I'm just about keeping the close people that love me for me. People not people that love me because of what I do, because of the boxing people. They want to be around the hype. Fuck all the hype. I just want to be around my close friends and my family and those that love me. And I want to make a lot of money and I want to enjoy my life. Good man. Harry Davies yes. from Majority. Massive congratulations, man. Uh,